Hi and welcome back to another video. As you can probably hear, I still have a bit of my cold left, but I just want to add something before we start into the video. Originally, this was shot at the end of January at Intel. And back then they still had this three stage NDA, which I didn't like. And after giving them feedback, they changed it. So actually today also overclocking results are allowed to be shown. So consider this change in information with what I'm saying in the video, because I'm saying different things. So just so you know, and because I still have my cold, you can now enjoy the advertisement spot done by Cora. This video is powered by Hetzner. If you have a workload that doesn't require 56 cores but still a high performance dedicated root server, you should look into the AX41 NVMe. The Ryzen 5 3600 based server is equipped with dual 512 GB NVMe SSDs, 64 GB of memory and costs only 37.30 Euro per month. As usual with Hetzner, there is no minimum contract period and you can use unlimited traffic. Find out more on the link below. Hi and welcome back to another video again out of the Intel OC lab in the US. We are actually shooting this in January, but we are now allowed to show like the footage regarding Sapphire Rapids. I'm pretty sure you know what Sapphire Rapids is about. And we are going to showcase a 56 core CPU on this board. We are also going to show the board more in detail. And I can promise the performance we, which we're going to see and also the power consumption which we're going to see is going to be absolutely insane. Here we have the working setup with the 56 core in this current state. It's cooled by an AIO. It's going all to the left. I'm trying not to show too much, but here you can see 360 millimeter AIO. As far as I know, it's uh, from Cooler Master. And in this state, the setup is already overclocked at 4.2 gigahertz. We're going to show that in a second. And I can already spoiler some idle power consumption that is measured like from the wall, which is like 360 watt is already quite insane. And one more thing I want to highlight is the VRM because it looks pretty tiny and it looks like it cannot handle anything. But I can promise, because I already saw some numbers previously, it's insane how much it can actually handle, like how much power it's going to draw. And it works kind of fine on this reference board. The memory on here is octa-channel, as you can see, and it's RDIM ECC, currently 192 gigabytes, and it's running with 5600 mega transfers. Regarding the CPUs, Sapphire Rapids basically comes in two different versions. First of all, we have the, I would call it the smaller version, which is a monolithic die. That's also kind of interesting. This is this one. It comes with up to 24 cores, which would be the W72495X. Uh, 24 is because the two stands for the, the smaller chip, basically the 4 for the 4th gen Intel scalable processor and then the 95X is the made up name for the highest uh, type of processor. As I said before, 24 cores. And then the bigger one, which is made out of four CPU tiles, basically the same CPU that we deleted like one and a half years ago, roughly. It's still looking exactly the same internally. But this one has 56 cores and speed is going to be insane. We're going to check out some benchmarks in a second. I can already promise you that, but also the price is very impressive. That's probably what the X stands for, like extremely expensive, because the MSRP is just below 6,000 US dollar. And at least for us, like being from Germany, we have to account in VAT and like into Euro, it's like 7,000 Euro. And that's just a CPU. But then you have to think of, you will have to buy like a proper board. Main board is going to, I don't I have no idea, maybe like $1,000, $2,000 and then some RDIM ECC memory. It's definitely also not going to be cheap. So roughly, I guess, entrance cost into the platform with the highest CPU is roughly $10,000, which is definitely crazy. Here we have uh, Kirk and he's going to be our man for today to run the benchmark because I'm here to do the video, but um, yeah, Technically speaking, I'm not going to do the benchmark myself. So it's going to be an official Intel benchmark because he's pulling the trigger. And as you can see here, it's the 3495X. And here you can see that all of the 56 cores are currently clocked to 4.2 gigahertz. As I mentioned before, we're running 5600 mega transfers with 192 gigabyte of memory and we are now going to perform a Geekbench 5 multi-threading benchmark.
especially at the beginning of the benchmark it's mostly some single threaded load that's why also the power consumption is not that high now it's going in the right direction it's closing in on uh, 1000 watt at least uh, i saw some of these numbers earlier yeah that was quickly 1100 The current record, by the way, is with an AMD Ryzen Threadripper with the 5995WX at 4.35 GHz with 48,000 points. And now here we have 54,000 points in Geekbench 5. The overclocking process itself was done with Intel XTU and what I find kind of mind-blowing is if you just look at the core voltage, which was 1.0 volt, as you can see also here in CPU-Z, and again, it was with a target clock of 4.2 gigahertz. I mean, we were seeing uh, like power spikes above 1000 watt. But apart from that, not much was adjusted in XTU. You can see the current limit is maxed out at 1024 amps. But apart from that, it's pretty simple. If you scroll down, you can see all the P cores, all the 56 P cores. And also with the star mark, you would see the favorite cores. And of course, 4.2 GHz is not the limit. That's just the current setting. But if you have more cooling, maybe also a different board with a bigger VRM and um, yeah, as I said again, different cooling, you can surely squeeze a lot more out of the CPU. But keep in mind that with just one volt and 4.2, we already closed in on like 1000 watts. So you can just go from there and estimate what kind of power draw you would see with maybe like 1.1 or 1.2 volt. As you could see, performance, at least in Geekbench 5, with 54,000 points in the overclocked state is absolutely impressive. And I want to remind you that the platform which we were looking at is, is a development platform. So that's not retail status. You have to think about if you would buy, I would say, a proper retail board with a decent VRM and then maybe think of a custom water cooling solution. I'm pretty sure that you could like, push the CPU much higher than this because we were looking at a CPU clock at 4.2 gigahertz, 1.0 volt, and I'm pretty sure if you would be able to cool it, maybe like 1.1 volt, 1.15, then I guess maybe 4.6 to 4.8 gigahertz would be possible. That's just a rough estimate. I also want to point out that at this state, technically, if we're following the NDA, I would not be allowed to show any kind of overclock performance of the CPU because the NDA is staged in three different stages. So the first one is like just pure information about what kind of CPUs will be out there. The second one is like just show stock performance. And then later on, like much later on, you would be allowed to see the overclocking performance. And I'm glad that Intel allowed us to at least get a sneak peek of the overclock performance. And you could see that at least it easily beat a 64 core Threadripper with 56 cores and also a much lower clock, which definitely shows what kind of performance these CPUs offer. And I mean, as a reminder, the CPU we're looking at with 56 cores, it's basically the same as a 12900K, which has eight cores, but 56 cores of that in this package. And we all know that a 12900K is a very quick CPU. So having 56 cores of that in here, that is definitely a very impressive thing. The board which we are using again in today's video is an RVP. So again, reference validation platform is the same term which we already heard in the previous video out of the Intel overclocking lab. And the socket in the center is the socket 4677. So 4,677 pins, quite a lot. And um, very similar to the previous workstation platform, we don't have an ILM. So the CPU is mounted just by pure force over the cooler, which is mounted on top. There is like a, like a plastic clamp that allows to attach the CPU to the cooling solution and then mount it into the socket. But I guess whenever we will see like custom versions, maybe a custom water cooling block that could be different for retail boards. This is also never obviously going to be a retail board. This is just for pure testing and evaluation to make sure that all the functions of the CPUs are there so they can test if all, everything that's intended to be used is also working. That also explains why you don't have like an extremely beefy VRM because overclocking, I mean, it's possible, we will see that, but that's not the purpose of this board. It's just to check that all the functions are there. 
One of the functions would be octa channel memory on the big CPU and also a 112 PCI Express 5.0 lanes. That's why you have plenty of PCI Express slots and also the according power supply. So you have a 24 pin ATX and dual EPS for CPU power and all the rest you technically don't need just for the CPU testing, but you would use them for additional power to the PCI Express slots. Apart from that, it's pretty similar to the other boards which we checked out in the previous video. Again, you would have this to have a swappable chipset, so you can use that if you want to. And that's basically it. The rest is not really special or different from the other boards which we already covered in the previous video. Now back in my studio in Berlin, because meanwhile I also managed to organize some Sapphire Rapids parts. First of all, we have this huge motherboard from Asus, which is completely insane. It re definitely reminds me of the Dominus Extreme. And funny thing is, it's called Tannenbaum, like the code name, which pretty much means Christmas tree in German. You can see currently it's only equipped with two memory sticks. Those are sticks I bought. Those are just very simple 4800 RDIM DDR5 ECC sticks because availability and price and everything is not that great. But I also received a quite exciting kit from G-Skill. And we're just going to swap this in quickly. Um, I'm actually also shooting this on Wednesday, like right before this video will go online. So I don't have time to do like a detailed review, but that's something I definitely want to do once I feel a bit better and once I have a bit more time to play around with this. Certainly these Micron sticks would do their job as well, but the G-Skill kit, and that's absolutely amazing, they send a 6400 C32 kit. It is XMP. So we have DDR5 RDIM ECC with XMP. That is completely nuts. And also, G-Skill, thank you very much for providing this so quickly. And I mean, that's not going to be a cheap kit, so again, thank you. Memory DIMMs are in place and I'm very excited to load XMP. I hope everything will work out. I also want to quickly thank Noctua for swiftly providing this NH-U14S in DX4677. So that's the only 4677 cooler I currently have. I'm waiting for a water block to do some real overclocking because obviously with this kind of power draw, you're not going to reach exciting numbers with an air cooler, but that should certainly be fine for like base testing and also probably some mild overclocking. Since the power draw of this platform is so high, the VRM configuration is also quite interesting and also the fact that you can directly hook up two PSUs to this platform. If you only use one, then you just use the lower ATX connector and those two 8-pin EPS. We are running with a 16 gigabyte module size, so that's why we have with eight sticks a total of 128 gigabyte and stock they would run only at DDR5-4000. If you just see this BIOS, you know that we are in uh, the workstation area, but there is AI tweaker with all the overclocking functions. And the first thing we will try is set this to XMP. Let's see if this works. CPU-Z seems not to detect the memory speed correctly yet, but we can see that the latency is correct. And also if we check in hardware info, it's listing 3200 MHz speed, which then equals the 6400 mega transfers. And uh, yeah, everything worked out of the box, like just straight applied, no issues at all. That's pretty insane. I'm now running some Cinebench R23. My system acts a bit funny, I have to say. So you can see that I just clicked start but it takes like, I don't know, five seconds until the benchmark starts. This could be my Windows. I think I should do a new, like a fresh install. Didn't have the time to do so, but just looking at the numbers right here, you can see during the benchmark, it's like 400 to 500 watt power draw, equaling in just below 7,000 points in R23. I'm not quite sure if the performance is off or not because as you can see this entire system acts a bit weird. Didn't have the time to do so but if you check the clock speed, stock, it's only 2.9 gigahertz. So yeah, could be in line. I'm still absolutely excited to finally see uh, Sapphire Rapids alive as a new HEDT platform. Unfortunately, as I said, I didn't have time to do like a full review or anything. I just received most of the parts here. Should still be quite exciting, especially considering if you compare it, even though those are pretty much all the lake cores, they are a bit different because these CPUs have fiber, so they have integrated voltage regulators, which means that you could theoretically give an individual voltage to every individual core and also clock them individually. So there is a lot of 
stuff you can do with this platform. It should be very exciting and I will just go back to bed now. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.